trying to build a tiny PC and everyone's recommending a Pico PSU. I got something else in, well, in stock and store and idea. I don't know. I got this thing. I'm going to show it to you and maybe you should think about it. Yeah. Yeah. Plug and simple run. This video is going to be going over the HDplex 200 watt DC ATX converter. Sorry, I couldn't make that name any longer. Um, so where this finds its uses are in, well, your tiny form factor. I'm talking, you know, like your eight liter, no, probably smaller than that, like five, six liter under, you know, those ones where you can't quite fit a flex PSU, but you still need power in there because, you know, it's a computer. Well, that's, that's where this goes. Before I get into all the details, don't forget to subscribe. Comment down below. Let me know if, you know, you're interested in something like this or, you know, a tiny build. I did do the Milo 10 case, you know, the unboxing a while back, and I was going to do a build in that, but it didn't seem like it got a whole lot of interest. So, if, you know, it does. Let me know. Maybe I'll do something ridiculous in that thing. I do have the 11600K on here. Now, if you have seen my videos before, you probably know that this was going into my fiance's build. So I went with the 11600K because when I did the build, the 5700G and 5600G were not out yet. So when it came to, you know, your performance, this was kind of the best with you know, a little hitch, and that would be the heat. Now, the only reason I'm even discussing that is because I'm using this today to show, you know, the use for this HD Plex. And with this and this would fit in the Milo 10, which is a three liter case, it's small. Now what they recommend is a Pico PSU. Now, when I started doing some research and started looking around, I didn't feel, well, I didn't feel like it was really safe to go with one of those. You know, maybe they are. People do use them. People do these tiny builds, you know, when you want them in your living room, but you don't want them to stick out. It's a thing people do. But I got to doing some research and I found HD Plex. Now, these are pretty awesome. This one is 200 watt, but they also have a 400 watt and they have the capability to do dual 400 watts to give you 800 watts in a super small frame. Now those are, you know, special use cases, but if you wanted, you can get this with another mini power supply so you don't have this. But for the Milo 10, you got no choice. You gotta you gotta use one of these. And it sucks. I know. No one no one likes a power brick. But you know, when you start shaving off those liters and you want something small, you still gotta get your power from somewhere. So with that, let's get this thing out of the box. Now, the biggest thing that you know, I was drawn to was just the quality look of this. When you look at the Pico PSUs, they're cheap. They look cheap. This is not cheap. And, you know, for the most part, it doesn't look cheap either. So, yes, when you first look at it, this is bulky. So, I do recommend, before ordering this, you verify that you can fit it in that case. Because, you know, there are going to be those options, sadly, to where... You're probably restricted to a Pico PSU and for that, you know, it's going to be the similar build process as what I'm going to show you today with this. So, you know, at least there's that too. And as you can tell, they are very, very simple. So you have your 24 pin here. You've got a six pin, which will connect to this guy, which will be your power jack port for your power brick. So that's, you know, the basis of it. Now with this does come an option for PCIe. So if you've got a super tiny case that still has room for a graphics card, you can still use this. Now granted, if you're getting that, you're getting real low on power consumption. I've got the 11600K. Now, yes, those consume a ton of power. I have it restricted to 65 watts for this use case, which, you know, a lot of money to spend on something to really hamper it down to like 50% power but that was in this is now let's figure this out so then your CPU power is as simple as this little guy 
So this will go right into this guy. So black, right? The red one over here is PCIe. Don't mix those up. You pop that guy in there. This will hook to your CPU power. This will hook to your 24 pin. And this will hook to this, which hooks to this, which goes into the power, which then, voila, PC time. Now, you also do have, you know, some SATAs too, if you are running a, you know, a solid state that isn't NVMe, which these days, why go with anything besides NVMe? Except for, of course, price, because they're, they're cheap, right? No, no, they're not cheap. Let me get this a little closer so I can see it. So again, this is gonna come in right here. Now you will notice, well, maybe you won't notice. I notice, so I can tell you, this heat sink is pretty close to the RAM, right? But you also have to remember, if you wanted, these heat sinks can be removed. Now what you're gonna see is a decent amount of this sticking outside of the board, right? So if you don't have a good 30 to 40 millimeters extra on the side of this, this is not gonna fit in your use case without removing this heat sink. Yes, you can remove heat sinks, but you do gotta remember that um, someone somewhere designed it for a reason, and most likely that reason was to get rid of excessive heat. Now, one thing you are gonna find fun is you have all of this, right? Ooh, I should probably hook up the fans too. You have all of this to probably not go a very long distance for your PCIe. So expect a little extra, you know, cable management love. I'm back. So all I did was hook everything up, right? So one, I had my, my fan unhooked, so that's hooked up. You've got your CPU power hooked up. You got your 24 pin hooked up. Then you've got this six pin connector that runs over to your jack port, which then runs to your power brick. I also hooked up the power switch on my test bench. So let's plug it in and see if it blows up or not. And we have power. So as simple as that. Now, that means literally your case only has to be that big. Your three liters, perfect. You know, if you got four liters, you can add some fans, some breathing room, that'd be even better. I am tearing this build down and using some of the parts because I'm gonna redo the Inwin B1 build, so stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe. You know, I've got random projects like this that hopefully, you know, bring usage for you guys when you have these questions because I had no idea what to do when I seen Pico PSU. Uh, before that point, I'd never even heard of it. You know, I'm used to flex power supplies or your ATX or SFX power supplies. But there is a realm to where you are too small for those uses. That's where this comes into play. And as you can see, it's as simple as this. Now this right here gives you 180 watts. So this will be more than enough to power a 5700G it should make a very small beast of an eight core CPU with, you know, not great graphics, but enough graphics to game. You know, if you want to hook your kid up with something and they don't have much desk room, heck, get the Milo 10, pop it in there, pop it on the back of the monitor and you're good to go. Now I find myself rambling, which is what I do. So I'm going to end this video and, you know, thank you.